I've been looking forward to this trip all summer, and today we're embarking on a journey that will take us through rugged landscapes of Idaho and Montana. And as we explore old ghost towns, forgotten mines, and lost cemeteries, I'll be sharing with you five undeniable reasons why you should dive headfirst into the thrilling world of overlanding. From the thrill of off-road exploration to the captivating history that echoes through the deserted streets, this expedition promises to be an epic blend of adventure and discovery. So buckle up, because we're about to reveal why overlanding is the ultimate gateway to untamed wilderness and untold stories. I'm Don, and this is Living on the Apex. So first off, we need to answer the question, what's overlanding? Well, overlanding is simply this, self-reliant travel to remote destinations where the joy is really in the journey rather than that final destination. As I'm right now driving on a mountain road, it's rough, it's rugged, but I've got a vehicle that's capable, but you don't have to have a, a, an incredible vehicle to be able to just drive these roads. Some of them, you just a dirt road gets you out and about. So. That's simply overlanding. Reason number one, freedom and flexibility. Unlike other road trips, you're not confined to a certain road. You can get out on dirt roads, you can get on muddy roads, you can get out on snowy roads uh, while you're overlanding. And you can go pretty much anywhere you want if you have the right gear and the right vehicle. And we'll talk about that here in a few moments, but just the freedom to be able to just, you see a dirt road, you see a mountain pass, and you're like, let's go for it. Let's go check that out. And you can do that usually with most overlanding vehicles. And the awesome thing about that is you can just find some incredible hidden gems, little remote locations nobody ever knows about or goes to, like this Eddie schoolhouse. You can just see history right here in the middle of nowhere and so that's reason number one freedom and flexibility able to get off the beaten path you might need a good vehicle to do it you might have to have some gear but that's all part of overland first campsite for the night somewhere near Argenta Montana near the ghost town of Bannock and we just checked out a really old cemetery it's so amazing looking at these old gravestones and some that aren't even marked and it's kind of sad in some ways as they're kind of lost in time to some extent as many graves were here in the west but looking forward to the evening I'm going to cook up some steak and some shrimp 
and just have a good evening and we'll talk about reason number two uh, for overlanding. All right, see you in a little bit. second reason is community and camaraderie. There's something incredible about getting off the beaten path, getting off grid, getting away from the hustle and bustle of life, and being able to just sit around a campfire with friends, guys that enjoy the same things you do, and just share stories and get to know one another. I think some of the greatest times I've had with friends and with family and with my wife especially is just getting out away from all the distractions and just spending time together. So that's reason number two, community and camaraderie. Welcome to Bannock State Park. It's day two of our journey here on our overlanding trip and I thought it would be a good location to talk about reason number three why you ought to start overlanding and that is self-reliance and problem-solving skills. You learn that when you're overlanding. I mean when you're out on the road you're responsible for your survival and your well-being. You learn how to set up camp, learn how to cook, you learn how to navigate uh, you learn a lot of skills. You learn how to repair your vehicle, at least you should. You, know, you learn how to recover your vehicle if you get stuck. And there were many times when we were out and about that we uh, found ourselves helping people get out that were stuck. Or even myself, I got stuck last winter, if you remember, and had to chip myself out and figure out a way to get out while I was out by myself. So self-reliance and problem-solving skills. And one of the things that I love about overlanding is reminds me of the Oregon Trail video game when I was a kid when you had to load up and you had to pick the right items you had to pick the right amount of bullets the right kind of food you had to pick the right amount of salt to get you all the way across uh, the country 
And I feel like it's the same way. One of my favorite parts of overlanding is planning the trip, packing the Jeep, and then hitting the road. And so that's reason number three. <laughs> Headed to Little Elkhorn Mine. It is about eight miles down this very narrow mountain dirt road. Sure is beautiful though, and it smells great. The pine needles reminds me of back home in Northwest Montana. Even though I know we're in Montana right now, a lot of mud puddles. There's been a lot of rain for August. We made it to Elkhorn Mine and it is, there's just signs of, of mining operations all over the place. Incredibly beautiful view of this mountain with the peak on it. It's unbelievable. You can see the tailings right here behind me. Big pile of them. <music> Number three, self-reliance and problem solving. This road that we're on is extremely rough and narrow and you really have to navigate it well uh, getting over the rocks. But it's been a beautiful drive. And just before we started down the mountain, I had to replace a fuse because I blew it trying to charge my 500 watt power supply um, using my cigarette lighter outlet and it blew the fuse so thankfully one of the guys had a fuse a bunch of extra fuses so I need to start packing extra fuses This old mine here, the Coolidge Mine, was a massive operation. This structure behind me was a massive mill, and we figure 
the entire operation of processing the ore and getting the gold out of the rocks was all done right here. You see how it's got the wood all around the side. It'll twist it, it'll have the bars in there and it'll rotate the rocks and the sluice. Oh, and then it comes out the other end. Looks like an ancient creature buried and just his back is exposed. All right, let's see what this looks like. Where's my, where's my spatula? Oh, it's right here. I smell pizza dough. Ooh, we're almost 500 degrees. Then turn that thing down. Yeah. That is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, that, that is perfect. Dude. Don't drop it. No, we're good. Let's see your first. Oh, here's in there, man. Thank you. Is sir. there a problem with that paper plate? <laughs> I'm gonna stick it in there. Yeah, just put it in just like, so that. Just go like that. That's how I get the edges. There you go. Thank you, sir. What a spectacular day. Day two couldn't have gone better. We got to do some incredible exploring of Cool Ridge, Ghost Mine, Elkhorn uh, Mine, and uh, Bannock Ghost Town. Several ghost towns and driving in the mountains. Got a little rough, but it was just beautiful. And then to just top it all off, we got to see some wildlife near the end. And then we found this amazing campsite coming up from Glendale, Montana, and it's just amazing and beautiful scenery all the way around, and we got it all to ourselves. So really, right now, this entire day is what overlanding is all about. And so I wanted to share with you reason number four of why you should be overlanding. And I've really struggled because I, I have number five for tomorrow, without a doubt. I know what my number five is, which essentially is my number one. But but reason number four, I would say, is that you have unlimited adventure possibilities. You have opportunities to create memories with your family, create memories with your friends when you're out overlanding. Now, I realize you could do that vacationing, you could do that backpacking, you could do that hiking, but there's something unique and special about overlanding. You're combining hiking, you're combining possibly backpacking, you're combining all of these elements into a vehicle and uh, and driving and where the destination isn't so much the goal, it's just the journey. And so that's a, I think for me, that's a wonderful reason why you should be overlanding because you have an unlimited possibility of adventures. You can go into the Rocky Mountains or you can go into the Southern uh, Utah deserts. You can drive through uh, slot canyons basically or you can drive to the top of mountains. Unlimited possibilities with overlanding. And if you've got a pretty decent vehicle, you don't have to have anything special. You don't have to have a Jeep. You just need something that can get you out on some dirt roads, give you some assurance. You, it'd be nice to have some clearance, but we, we have all sorts of vehicles on this trip and they've done well and we've driven some rough country. But 
anyway, I hope that was uh, a good reason for you. It's a great reason for me. Look forward to tomorrow morning and sharing with you reason number five. It's my last day. I got to head back. These guys are going to continue on for another two days. But I want to share with you reason number five here tomorrow morning. So thank you so much for being with us today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Get it warm. They leave that open all the time? I think so. Warming, become warming, warming hats. Yep, yeah. some of those up low come around. Already, it's a beautiful day. I get out of my tent, and the first thing I see is a moose walking up the mountain right next to me. Unbelievable. And that really kind of fits in with reason number five of what I'll be sharing with you guys today later on. So that, that was, a, I would say, an honorable mention of probably reasons to go overlanding is the amount of history and cultural, you know, experiences that you have when you go overlanding. I, I think it's pretty, pretty incredible. I love history. I have a degree in secondary education and social studies and history. So I, uh, I definitely enjoy history. Hey Doug, is that showing up on Gaia? That's what Jeff and I are using. Nice, I like the fact that it shows you those locations. Well, with me, you never know, man. It might be on Gaia, but I'd probably plotted it from something else. Well, I'm here in the middle of the Tarhee National Forest in Idaho. I'm on my way home, and I wanted to share with you my number five reason why you should be overlanding, and it's probably my favorite, because overlanding gives you the greatest opportunity to immerse yourself into God's creation. Whether you're waking up to beautiful sunrises, as I have done and my wife and I have done over and over again since we've started overlanding, to going exploring remote areas in southern Utah in the deserts, driving to the top of mountains in northern Utah or Idaho or Montana. You find yourself surrounded by animals such as moose, as I have this, on this trip. I've seen three different moose, a mama moose and her calf, and a baby bull moose, and several other. We've seen deer, wildlife all over the place, and it's just exciting when you get to immerse yourself into God's creation. And then last night, we had the darkest sky I've had since I was a kid in Montana, in northwest Montana. We had dark skies. Used to lay out onto the grass, looking up into the sky and just wonder how big the universe was and how small I was. And the Bible says the heavens declare or the heavens proclaim the glory of God and the expanse proclaims the work of his hands. And day after day, they speak knowledge. And night after night, they just proclaim that there's a God, really. And so uh, I'm thankful for God's creation and be able to just immerse myself in so many different ways. Because the way I look at it, if there's a design, there's a designer. And I see design everywhere from the sunrise, sunset, to trees, to plants, and to animals. And so for me, that's why I love overlanding. And I encourage you to just jump right in and give it a shot yourself. That's it for our video today. And uh, I hope that you just enjoy this video and that you would like it, you would share it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We're so thankful for those that have subscribed. We're getting closer to the thousand subscribers. 
and you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. God bless.